This video is brought to you by this comment. Hi, this is a Skyrim build about ghosts and sneak archery. It is also a vanilla non-crafting build. If you know me, you know this is painful to me, but sometimes people ask for vanilla builds, so here we go. The Shadow is a necromancer stealth archer hybrid, so you know it is going to work well because it's almost impossible to mess up a stealth archer. Obviously, it is what you do when you are forced, against all good judgment, to play this game without crafting skills. And I mean no crafting at all, not even perkless alchemy or enchanting to patch up the weak spots and flesh out the item loadout. The Shadow is too preoccupied by speaking with the dead to devote his time and effort to any other craft. He enjoys manipulating his enemies or just unsuspecting citizens into fighting each other while bringing the dead out of their slumber. He makes both your mind and your house haunted. He also relies on anniversary edition ghost summons, especially tomb guardians, who can create more little summons as they put down the enemies. Thanks to muffle and invisibility, he can remain unseen even without many ranks in stealth, as the ghosts will keep your enemies' attention away from you you and with heaps of magicka and decent magicka regeneration you will always be able to cast muffle and invisibility spells. Well not before you grow your magicka bar to around about 300, it's not that hard considering we play as a high elf. He is also an excellent control freak, he masters illusion, mind affecting spells and uses the perfectly balanced spell of paralysis rune frequently. This spell is actually perfect for sneak archers, once you find a nice spot to shot your enemies from, you can simply place one in front of yourself and then even if something goes wrong and you get detected, the approaching foes will trigger the rune and simply lay down to take in some more arrows. With all that awesomeness I would still prefer to play this on master difficulty at most with mediocre armor rating and health, you may cause yourself a lot of frustration in certain scenarios on legendary. It will be doable on legendary, just, just, just um, often annoying. Most of the video is therefore recorded on master. We need no mods for this build whatsoever, just the anniversary edition content. Well, uh, well, okay, I wear the fur uh, piece around my neck, which is from a mod, modular clothing system. My hood clashes horribly with my robes, I needed something to smoothen the transition, you know. It has no effect on gameplay, just, just leave me alone. Here is the basic setup, a high elf should be a great choice of race because of the magicka bonus allowing you to cast more spells in consecution early in the game. The entire pacing of the combat style is casting a few spells in a row, finishing it with a bound bow, then a sneaky shooty shooty action, then spell casting again. So the reduced magicka regeneration of the Atronach stone could be a liability early to mid game, but a wonderful choice for the finished character granting you even more free magicka and granting spell absorption to stack with the Atronach perk. Going this way would also mean choosing a Breton over High Elf. I decided to go more with the roleplay concept of a stealthy necromancer and use the ritual instead. Just the ritual, not even with the ethereal crown. Well, what is happening to me? And the attribute ratio is 50-50 health to magicka. With a bound bow as your main weapon you have no use for stamina and the choice of race and gear results in the total magicka value of 400 around level 50, which is going to be slightly more than needed to never worry about running out of magicka. The skills to perk are archery, conjuration, alteration, illusion, destruction and sneak. Destruction is needed mainly for the rune master perk and can be treated as low priority secondary skill. Archery, conjuration and sneak are the opposite, get them up fast and prioritize them over anything else. Unfortunately, to have the build at the peak efficiency shown in this video, you need to be at level 51 or 52 instead of the usual 50. A few perks can be skipped, but not without a little bit of pain in the behind. 
Let's start with Archery, where we need a lot of perks and certainly all 5 ranks of Overdraw, because we can't use Smithing for damage increase. <laughs> One rank of Steady Hand is technically optional, because you can still shoot straight without it, of course, but there's gonna be a lot of chaos going on when you try to land your shots. The Undead Rising and Falling Shades being summoned and absorbed, Whirlwind Cloak effect in your face, this little extra help with aiming might prove invaluable. Quick Shot and Ranger are both quite essential to low armor, archers allowing for easier dodging even when notching an arrow. Speaking of armor, here are the Alteration perks, pretty standard set with all ranks of mage armor and magic resistance. Cost reducing perks up to and including Expert mainly for the Ebony Flesh, which is absolutely necessary late game. Magic resistance is one of the few ways of securing this character against spellcasters. The other two are Necklace of Nullification if you can get one and it'll become a ethereal shout. Stability is very nice to have when the flesh spells are your only armor, since you now need to recast it less, less frequently, less often. And for the perfectly balanced Paralyzes rune. Its paralyzes effect will now last for 12 seconds. Then we have conjuration perks here. Take the cost reducing perks up to adept or expert. It depends on how much raising zombies you intend to do. Dread zombie is the only expert level spell you might need, but the spell that has the most effect on your playstyle and works brilliantly with the necromancer's ritual is the Tomb Guardian, which is an adept spell. And you also have the Ritual Stone power at your disposal, which obviously costs no magic and needs no perks. So you may as well stay at adept level forever and spare yourself a perk point. Then we want the Necromancy Branch and Twin Souls. Two Tomb... Two Tomb? Two Tomb... Two Tomb... Two Tomb... Two tomb. Tomb Guardians with some extra health are often enough to deal with standard bandits and Draugr. They will summon little shades of enemies they defeat, or rather the enemies that are defeated close by and were hit by them in the last few seconds. These shades fight for you for a few seconds and then disappear. With Necromancer's Ritual active, it means every time a Guardian kills an enemy, a few seconds later a bit of your health and magicka gets healed. First and foremost we need Mystic Binding as soon as darn possible, so level 3 or 4. Barring what you can do with the smithing, you get one of the best weapons in the game at a cost of an early game perk. It's also a good weapon for sneak attack, casting spell itself could attract some attention, but that's why we take the quiet casting in Illusion. The rest of the Illusion tree can be perked later in the game, once your conjuration and mage armor and sneak attack efficiency are all at satisfying levels. On Unfortunately, in vanilla and without powerful fortify illusion potions, the skill requires almost every perk to be unlocked if we want to use the skill all the way through the playthrough. And we probably do want it, as a pacify spell or a route spell can save your life in case you get surrounded, which you must avoid at all costs. Fury spells can turn the enemies too strong for your minions to deal with into your minions. In fact, casting Fury or Frenzy and then Muffle and Invisibility results in a lot of satisfying mayhem with little to no danger to you. With Quiet Casting, you could even consider incorporating some master level ritual spells like Mass Paralyzes or Hysteria, because the enemies can't interrupt your spell casting if they have no idea where the flip you even are. Quiet Casting also solves a problem you will run into frequently with a build like this, casting your Bound Bow spell attracting attention. Well, now it it doesn't uh, attract any attention and you don't have to worry about casting it ahead of time. In Sneak we only go for the deadly aim for sneak attacks. Only one rank of stealth is required, with a diversion provided by summons, quiet casting, muffle and invisibility, and the fact you are not wearing any armor, you need no further improvements to your sneak efficiency. We then need 3 perks in destruction, which I leveled up mainly with the health absorbing spells like strangulation. They are quite useful as a heal alternative early in the game, but later you will have many other more satisfying toys with all the summons and mind affecting spells. Rune Master is our main and only goal here. It is a significant quality of life improvement to be able to place your Paralysis Rune at a very long range. Overall though, you can use the Rune at closer distances 
and it will still be insanely helpful, can save your life when surrounded and allows you to unload a few arrows into a helpless target. So consider the entire skill secondary and or optional. Now for the gear that grinds my gears. <laughs> there is literally no pre-enchanted feed slot items or hand slot items useful to the builds like this one. None. Nada. Okay, there is Archmage's boots, which I used, but for the hand slots there's absolutely just nothing. It makes no sense whatsoever to play a build like this with the strict no enchanting rule. The chest slot could also be used for uh, something way more useful than what we have here. I, I hate my life now, I am moving out to Ireland to become a hermit. Okay, I'm back. Here's the list of the pre-enchanted items we can use, bloody hell. Ascendant Necromancer's Hood provides a walloping plus 100 bonus to your magicka, enabling this build's entire attribute spread. There are weaker variants of this Hood, but the Ascendant one will start showing up after level 40. 30% 30 penalty to health regeneration has little to no effect on us, especially not when we use Necromancer's Ritual. Archmage's boots can be found in Archmage's quarters in College of Winterhold. You don't need to become the Archmage, you can just steal them. There is 40% resistance to shock in it, which is quite useful. Fine, let's say it's quite useful. It could be just Fortify Sneak, but uh, all right. Master Robes of Conjuration and Illusion can be bought from Court Wizards and college teachers and it reduces the casting cost of two of your main magic schools, provides you with 150 faster magicka regeneration as well. It is actually perfect for this build, at least one item. Then we need two generic magic items, necklace of nullification and a ring of peerless archery, basically the best magic resistance necklace and the best fortify archery ring you can get your hands on. Or, or the other way around, the necklace of archery, you, you know, you know. These two enchantments need to be placed on you. Would be mighty useful to put any level of fortify archery on your gloves as well, but some people are sadistic, so let's not do it this time. We also use Azidal's ring of necromancy, obviously you can't wear two rings at once, you just put the Azidal's ring on when you are about to use the ritual power. You cast the Necromancer's ritual spell beforehand, each of your many minions will explode for a bit of frost damage and heal your attributes on death. So here is the list of frequently used spells for the complete build of course, obviously use lower level equivalents when possible early on, but your main summon in the end is going to be a tomb guardian. They deal decent melee damage and create shades of fallen enemies that fight for you for a bit. Necromancer's ritual as mentioned synergizes nicely with all this, but you can abuse the necromancer's ritual in a few other ways. Despite the description the spell doesn't only heal you when a conjured or raised minion dies, but also when you replace it with another summon or when it gets split into two weird shades with the soul split spell, or simply when summoning spell runs out. This also applies to shades summoned by your summons, so the shades created by your tomb guardians will heal you quite frequently as they only last for a few seconds. Unfortunately the necromancer's ritual will also repeatedly dispel your invisibility, so you need to make a choice. either you want to stay perfectly hidden or you want to risk a little bit more but get some magic and health replenishment during the encounter. As our main and only weapon we obviously use Bound Bow with a new super cool anniversary edition Bound Quiver. Paralyzes Rune, Ebony Flesh and Whirlwind Cloak are all here to protect you. The armor spell and the cloak should be cast one after another. The cloak works at random but considering we also use Become Ethereal for defense, sometimes simply running around the battlefield can mess up the enemy ranks quite severely. Then we have muffle and invisibility spells to remain undetected or even escape after we are detected as the summons provide the necessary diversion. An invisible conjurer can land quite a few sneak attacks even after the combat already started exactly because the enemies are too busy to look for them. And for the shouts as mentioned become ethereal and quite often actually the drain vitality shout to combine with the help absorbing spells from anniversary edition content. And that is basically everything there is to say about this build, it is a very neat little combination of conjuration and assassin gameplay and it's rather satisfying, it can get squishy if surrounded but other than that it is a full crowd control 
full assassin, full conjurer. Now, that's that for this video. I hope we will see each other again. There will be more and more builds and I have an exciting announcement to make. Not today though, but quite soon, about some special Skyrim build project. Now, uh, that's it for today. Uh, be nice to your mom and dad. And uh, we will see each other again. Bye-bye. Jugglers and singers require applause. You are a gamer!